This is part 129 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between DateTime and DateTime2 data types in SQL Server. Here are the differences. The first difference is from the date range perspective. For DateTime, it is January 1st, 1753 to December 31st, 1999. For date time too, notice we have got a broader date range. It starts from January 1st, 0001 to December 31st, 1999. Even from a time range perspective, notice we have got better precision with date time too than date time. So for date time, the time range starts from 0 hours, 0 minutes, 0 seconds to 23 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds and 997 milliseconds. Whereas for date time 2, it is 0 hours, 0 minutes, 0 seconds to 23 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. And look at the milliseconds. With milliseconds, we have got seven digits precision, which means date time 2 is going to be much more accurate than date time. So as far as the accuracy is concerned with date time, the accuracy is up to 3.33 milliseconds, whereas for date time 2, it is 100 nanoseconds. Look at the unit of measurement. Date time is in milliseconds, whereas date time 2 is in nanoseconds, which means date time 2 provides better accuracy than date time. And if you look at the storage size, it's fixed for date time, 8 bytes. For date time 2, the storage size varies between 6 to 8 bytes depending on the precision that we pick. We'll look at an example of how the storage size changes with the precision that we choose in just a bit. And as far as the default value is concerned, it's the same for both the data types. It starts from January 1st, 1900, 0 hour, 0 minutes, 0 seconds. So from these differences, it's very clear that date time 2 has got a broader date range than date time. And also date time 2 provides better accuracy than date time. So I would personally recommend using date time 2 over date time data type whenever possible. I think the only reason for using date time over date time 2 data type is for backward compatibility. Other than that, I don't see any other compelling reason for using date time over date time 2 data type. Now let's look at the syntax for date time 2. So first we specify date time 2 and then we can optionally specify fractional seconds precision. If we don't provide a value for this parameter explicitly, then the default precision is going to be 7 digits. The precision scale is from 0 to 7 digits. Depending on the precision that you choose, depending on your application needs, the storage size is going to change. And here is that table. Notice for precision 0, 1 and 2, the storage size is 6. For precision 3 and 4, storage size is 7. For precision 5, 6 and 7, storage size is 8 bytes. Let's look at this in action. What I'm going to do now is declare a table variable. Let's call it temp table. And this table variable is going to contain 8 columns. Okay, And all 8 columns data type will be date time. And for each column, the precision is going to change from 0 to 7. Okay, so I'm going to create a column. Let's call it date time 2 and we want precision 0. Okay, so date time 2 and I'm going to explicitly specify a value for this parameter, fractional seconds precision. So I want a precision of 0. Okay, and similarly, I'm going to create another column but this time I want a precision of 1. So we are explicitly specifying the precision that we want. Similarly, I want to create in our um, six more columns all the way uh, till precision 7. In the interest of time, I have already typed the code. So I'm going to copy it and paste it right here. So we have precision 2, precision 3, precision 4 all the way till precision 7 and look at the value for precision parameter. So that's our table variable. And now what I'm going to do is insert values for all these columns. So insert into and our table variable is at temp table values and I'm going to supply values for each of these columns and I'm going to supply the same value 20th of October 2015, 15 hours, 9 minutes, 12 seconds, and I'm going to 
you know, provide 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know, the value for milliseconds. So 2015, October 20th, and the time is going to be 15 hours, 9 minutes, 12 seconds. So 15 hours, 9 minutes, 12 seconds, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, 7 digits. And I'm going to do that, you know, 8 times because we have 8 columns here. We have to populate all those columns. So I'm going to paste this. So 8 times. All right, let's remove the last comma. And then what I'm going to do is we want the output to be like this. We want the precision. We want the actual date value and the storage size. Okay, so to get that, so I'm going to hard code the precision. So whatever you see here, precision 0, precision 1, I'm going to hard code that. So I'm going to say precision 0. Let's give it a column name. Let's call it precision. Since it's a keyword, I'm going to wrap it within square brackets. All right? So the first column is precision. And then we want the actual date value from the respective column. And the first column within that table variable is this one, date time to precision 0. OK, so I want that column value date time to precision 0 and I'm going to give again that column and alias let's call it date time and finally we want the storage size and to get the storage size I'm going to use data length function and we want the storage size of this column date time to precision 0 and let's give this column also an alias. I'm going to call this storage size. OK, and let's specify our table variable. So what is our table variable? Temp table. OK, now let's execute this and see what we get. Notice what we get. We get precision 0. And with precision 0, notice that we don't have milliseconds at all. We get the date part and then 15 hours, 9 minutes, 12 seconds and there are no milliseconds. Now what I'm going to do is you know apply a union all operator and then going to get the value for precision 1, precision 2, so on and so forth. Now the important thing to remember here is since we have selected for the first column the precision as 0, look at that we don't have milliseconds at all. Okay? Now let's go ahead and change this query. So I'm going to apply union all operator and then make a copy of this query so now I'm going to change the precision to precision 1 and this time we want the date value from date time to precision 1 column and we want the data length of date time to precision 1 column so we apply the union all operator now let's execute this query together and see what we get look at that with precision 1, this is the date we get. Look at the look at the precision we get in you know, the first value, 1 from the milliseconds. Okay? And look at the storage size, it is 6 bytes. So for precision 0 and 1, so far the storage size is 6. Now what I'm going to do is similarly apply the union all operator for the rest of the precisions. And in the interest of time, I have already typed that required code, so I'm going to copy that and paste it right here. So now, if you look at the query again, this is straightforward, similar to what we have done so far. So we apply this union all operator. So precision 3, we are retrieving the value from date time 2, precision 3 column. That is this column right here. Okay, so it goes on. Similarly, we want to, you know, we are missing precision 1. So let's actually make a copy of this one. And change this to precision 2. So we want precision 2 column and precision 2 column data length. So this data length function is going to return us the storage size. Alright, so let's go ahead and execute this and see what we get. Now look at what we get. 
So for precision 0, 1, 2, notice the storage size, it is 6. For precision 3, 4, the storage size is 7. For precision 5 to 7, we get storage size 8. And if you look at precision 7, look at the value. It's exactly the value that we have provided for the column in our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, it's not rounded, it's the exact value. So with seven digits precision, you know, the accuracy that we get is up to 100 nanoseconds. Okay, so obviously date time 2 is more accurate than date time data type. Thank you for listening and have a great day.